when I was a young fella, very young boy, I was out in the alley, and I saw birds on the power lines, and I had a BB gun they gave me. And I shot, and one of them dropped. And I went over to see it, and he looked up at me so pitiful, pitifully, you know, just broke my heart. He just, I could tell, he said, why did you do it, you know? So that, that, that gave me a sense of not wanting to kill anything after that. I said, I'm not a conscientious objector. You can send me anywhere you want to, but I'm not going to take another man's life because, life because I've seen mothers, you know, who've lost sons. The Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. It changed the character of the whole, you know, the whole country then. It got, got caught up in the hype, you know. I went to uh, a camp in New York. I don't remember it where we uh, got our insurance, you know, for our family to call the shots. We still didn't know where we were going. And, uh, but uh, as time passed, you know, we were loaded on a troop ship there at the, the port there in New York. Didn't know anything about where we were going, but uh, that's one time I realized that the, wall, the world was round. Because as we went to the horizon, I could see the Statue of Liberty. And the last thing I could see, that, hat, that hand going down. And that gave me an empty feeling, believe me. So we... Uh, traveled to uh, Europe and we had to be very careful because there were German submarines all around. They sank a lot of our ships, you know. They were out on that ocean for oh, about eight or nine days. Got seasick. You know, and they, they, the submarines were under it. But we finally uh, debarked at uh, Liverpool in the UK. From there we went to, they took us to a, a Welsh town where they had a small village. When we first started, you know, activated our company, they got a trainload of West Virginians. And a couple of days later, a trainload of Ohioans. Now, it turned out that my best friend was from Ohio. So he became the best friend. He was the best friend I ever had in the service. We did a lot of things together, you know. And, and, uh, we were friends until he died. Tom Pergil, you know, his name. I looked up and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is this my last day of life? You know, I'm in. And truly, I didn't think I got it through. That's a sign to a medical battalion. With the invasion, you know. So when the invasion invasion did occur, they didn't have the means to tell what the coming weather was. They didn't have satellites the way they have now, you know. They about six days in advance. So they got to where the, the meteorologist that the army had. 
said there might be just one day. That'll be between the 5th and the 6th of June. So we And before that, we trained, they put us in isolation in a Bob Dwyer camp in England, out in the forest. We didn't know where it was, but uh, we didn't know where we were going. So we got there, and then they told us where we were going. They had sand models of it and reference points. He said, no, but you're not leaving here. He said, if you get appendicitis or any kind, you just have to suffer because the Germans will give anything to get this information about where we're going. Yeah, so. Anywhere when we hit the beach, I had a friend. His name was uh, Charles Manning from Cameron, West Virginia. He was a dental technician because all of our officers, were, for the most part, were. MDs, you know, outside of Captain Brent. So, uh, when we hit the beach, we flared out. And I, I looked around, and there were body parts all the way, all over. And uh, I buried my face in the sand, and I thought I was going insane. And when I opened my eyes, it was a brisk morning. Not that far from me it was a hand. It was a human hand with the steam still coming out of it. And I looked around, and they had a little tractor there to try to get the mountains cleared out. But only the bottom of his torso was there with all his intestines down around the side with the steam coming from my, you know, and that was, that was pretty hard to take for a green fighter, you know. When we hit the beach, there were casualties. They say, I didn't go in with the first assault wave. That's a, that was the 29th Division out of it. Virginia, and uh, I guess you read the book, The Bedford Boys, just about the small town, and they lost almost 20 uh, men on that first day, and they have a, a memorial there, if you ever get a chance to see it, it's, it's great, but anyway, we got there, and we had uh, three collecting companies. They would collect them. And one clearing company would uh, get them evacuated out. And I worked in a, a, a ward, you know, a tent t temporarily. I was in the you know, administration, but uh, I did serve there. But at night, you know, there are no lights in that tent. And those boys tear my heart out. All they say is, Mama, Mama, where are you, Mama? Please, where are you? Where are you? And uh, that was hard. That was rough. Operation itself, the whole thing was called Overlord. That was a code name for it. And our outfit was Charlie, you know. So he couldn't give anything away, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation. It has come to pass with success thus far. 
experience that I'll never forget. I remember, you know, before we left the, the transport ship, they woke us up, said, we're going to give you breakfast. So when they brought it, it was greasy, greasy roast beef and greasy mashed potatoes. And I couldn't take it. I couldn't eat it. So uh, when we came ashore, you know, I didn't, I didn't miss it because I was too scared. But after that, you know, we got a little, a little adjusted to it. And uh, I, I just, you know, still thinking it was a nightmare, a nightmare. I did, you know, that I am going, that I went through, you know, not, not a real, a real scene. Either. So I had to come to terms with that, you know, eventually. Just seeing all the carnage, you know, the uh, shoreline along the beach was red with blood, all red with blood. And that uh, changes your psyche a little, you know. You get to a point to where nothing matters. But uh, they told us, you know, when we had that breakfast, they said, now you better eat it, because it's going to be the last meal, hot meal, you'll get in weeks. So they gave us what they call a little K ration, about the size of a Cracker Jack box. They had uh, canned, small cans of and, uh, meat in it, you know, meat, and uh, a raisin bar, two cigarettes, I don't know why, and, and chocolate, unsweetened chocolate. You wouldn't eat it unless you're really hungry for it. So we uh, used those for a while. Then they came up with a different type of ration. They called it sea rash. That was a little better. I said the rosary every day. And I promised the Blessed Mother. If she would say me, I would say the rosary. I wasn't saying the rosary all that much then. But I asked the Blessed Mother. She would say me. I, I promise to say the rosary every day from there on out. Yeah. We set up a little morgue, you know, on the beach there and put all these dead bodies in. I remember going in and looking at all of those. I was there by myself. Just, you know, just a nightmare. I mean, what a waste. What a waste. And uh, we, uh, we had a surgical team with us for the invasion. And, uh, it was down on the beach, you know. And uh, they brought a little French girl in, you know. And the surgeons trying to save her life. And, and she died. No surgeons cried. That picture sticks with me. Cute little girl. Did I tell you when we hit the... First hit the beach and I said I was going crazy and with that other uh, West Virginian. I got up to run and he just, he didn't move. And I looked over at him and he had a hole up there. And, and he was killed, you know, instantly. I, I had two prisoners. I've worked for, with me in the in the uh, the dispensary there. And I used to do uh, tests, you know, 
for gonorrhea and syphilis. And uh, this one time I was trying to determine, you know, I couldn't make up my mind, you know, what it was. I kept looking in the microscope. And one of those German uh, prisoners came over and he touched me. He said, let me look. He did. He said, that's positive. And uh, I said, how do you know? And he said, I worked for I.B. Fabian, you know, I guess a big German company. But we became good friends too. Um, so we made some homemade ice cream there, I don't know. Ah, uh, and uh, I had to give him some. I remember they kept saying, Primo, Primo. <laughs> oh boy. So we became better friends after that. After the invasion, they broke up our battalion. And the clearing companies and the collecting company were assigned to other units. And the headquarters detachment pretty much stayed, you know, as it was. They sent us to, uh, after Paris was liberated, they had us to join the, what they called the Medical Service School Center for the theater, European theater operations to train uh, medical personnel to serve in a tropical, uh, you know, uh, environment. And I got to, uh, I was still at a message center. That was my rank, message center chief. And, uh, they set us up in a chateau and they saw me a, a French girl. She could speak English and write English and she manned our switchboard, you know. So we got to be very good friends. We corresponded with each other for two or three years after the war. Her name was Colette Merlet. She was a good friend. Had a good relationship, nothing more, nothing less, you know, good friends. Anyway, we got the, stationed at the uh, Medical Service School Center there, and we had, had nurses working with us, you know, I never had them before. And we go out and play volleyball with them and all there. But they had a heck of a time. But uh, when the war ended, there's one thing I, I wanted to do while I was still there. I guess you've heard of Lourdes, haven't you? Yeah. Well, they, uh, we had... We were doing... Uh, able to get any furlough, either Switzerland or Lourdes. A lot of them, I was the only fellow a mile there with the Lords. The rest, all the rest went to uh, Switzerland. And we took a, a train down and it seemed like an eternity to get there, but I met two other fellows. So the three of us stuck together in Lourdes. While I was in Lourdes, I got to, it was at the, it's at the, you go up into the Pyrenees Mountains, you know, the storied Pyrenees, mm -hmm. Pyrenees Mountains that you studied in Latin class. And we up, went to the top of that in a cable, a cable car, it took us halfway up. There. And that was quite an experience. So, you know, with all its bad effects, I, there were some good effects for me because I would never have seen this because I got to Paris, I got to the Louvre, I got to the Cathedral Notre Dame, got to Tillery Gardens and Napoleon's tomb, you know, 
I was there for almost a year. And I left. When we came back, we uh, at Marseille, sailed by the rock of Gibraltar, you know. And then we hit a storm out in the Atlantic across it. When I, Henry Kaiser's boat, where they used uh, welding, wells instead of rivets. And about, but they lifted that our boat up. We thought it was going to break in two. It had happened to several other ones, you know. And that was the worst storm. Oh my, those waves are 30, at least 30 or 40 feet high. Just a up, boom, up, boom. And, and it was pitch dark, you know, outside. And, uh, I know someone gave us a scare there and said, you know, after he landed on one of the hard uh, landings, and said, we're going to sink. So we all panicked, you know. Um, I tried to, I, 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 I knew there's a risk in it that uh, I didn't think I'd die coming back home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And when I got back home, I couldn't do anything. I just uh, had no desire to do anything. Couldn't get reestablished myself in the family business. This is before. At that time, they called it a shell shock, you know. But uh, it later was was defined as PTSD. So I still suffer with that. You can scare me, you know. It, but I lived with, but I entertained myself miserably. Then I wanted to run to the Thomas Dam and drown myself because hmm. I didn't have any, any, you know, I, I didn't have anything to shoot myself with. In fact, uh, when they uh, took me, I was at the house, you know, Albert and I lived together and I had some Tucker County doctor I had a pill for everything and I couldn't get tracked out. Tracked out. So uh, one night I just started, got up and started walking circles and bad tremors, you know, couldn't control myself. And they called the, the uh, MT, MT. They put me on a, a stretcher and strapped me down. You know, I got the, they took me to, uh, we stopped at the clinic there in Parsons. And Jerry was there to meet me. And I said, Jerry, please shoot me. Please shoot me. He said, I wouldn't waste a bullet on you, you know. So they, they took me on into Elkins. And it so happened that Dr. Sam Roberts was there in Palms. And uh, Sandy met me there, you know. And, uh, and he's the one that worked with me at, at the emergency room. But he, he wasn't taking on any more patients. He was full, you know. So Paul talked to him, said, you know, please. He said, you seem to get along pretty well with him. So... He decided to take me. I knew there was something wrong with me, but I didn't know what it was. My brother Johnny, you know, I lived with him. Albert and I. He, he they had friends who were that came to visit him, and one was a, sh a show off. And I got back there, and 
And he, I think he had a few drinks in him, you know, they came for dinner. And he uh, said, let me hear about your experiences in the war, you know. And I broke down the sweat, you know. My brother Johnny had noticed that. He said, you go, you leave Bugs. You don't have to do that. I couldn't talk about it for years. I had the flashbacks to it, drove me crazy. So, you know, I couldn't talk about the war to anyone. Could not, they asked me, no, 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 no. But, you know, my sister, you know, Sister Francesca, was up in Wheeling. Albert and Abe and I went up to visit with her. And on the way back, a deep creek lake, one of their theaters are, was showing Saving Private Ride. I got to watching that. That was so real. No romance or any of that crazy stuff in it, you know, just as it happened. And I got, I looked at that. At that movie, I went out to the the car and I broke down and cried like a baby. I mean, like a baby. And I opened up and then I could cry. So uh, I had a friend who wrote this, Steven Spielberg. I, th I think I have a letter here someplace. I mean, she's the one. Thanked him for what his, uh, this film did for me. And I've been quite normal ever since. I think that's one of the missing links, you know, in the story. I went to, uh, got that garage, which I despised, you know, because I didn't like to have dirty, you know, studying for the priesthood, you know, you don't get your hands like that. So. I, uh, I got to go out and worked with my brother Guidi, and you know, I still uh, pretty tight we so we'd have our little squats every now and then. But the one time I had it, and I was under a bus trying to lubricate it, you know, a school bus. And yeah, you know, I, I, I despised that kind of stuff, you know lying on my back there under and uh, so they uh, knew that there was something wrong with me so they took me to uh, the Tucker County Hospital there where a doctor whatever his name I don't remember and uh, they got, of course, I quit eating and all that, you know. But, you know, as I say, I didn't know what I had. I don't want to drown myself. Just, you know. No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. First time they they brought the prisoners of war down, and they were what fight it. I just tempted to grab grab on and just take them out. You know, I couldn't control myself. You know, the ordeal was more than I could bear. You know, but, uh, thank God I didn't, because I wouldn't be able to live with myself. In fact, we corresponded with each other for two or three years after that. And I quit because I get embarrassed, you know, with my brothers and all. And, uh, you know, after about a year, I said, you know, I'm going to write to her. So I did, but she never answered. 
and she was a lovely girl. And I, I didn't care about movies, or maybe because it had the romance element element in it, and that wasn't, you know, that wasn't real. So, uh, now we got uh, Deep Creek Lake, you know, they had the cinemas there. That's, it was showing Save It Private Ryan. And I said, you know, I never wanted to go to, to the movies too well, but I went to see that. And after it was over, I was driving. I went out to the car. And I just cry, broke down and cried like a baby. And I couldn't control myself. But that was a catharsis for me. Because then I started to talk about it. Yeah. Some of these young fellows, you know, who served didn't, not in combat. I'm tempted to ask him, you know, excuse my language, because I don't use this kind of language. But I ask myself, what the hell did you do for your country? The show offs, you know what I mean? The Guarfani. No. No. I've, I've seen too many heroes. Really. I took my team. <laughs> I had my share of some of that work, but you know, I never call myself a hero. I often thought I could have become a hero because when uh, one of the uh, assault boats came in and dropped, he had a sand mine and, and opened the gate and those fellows with their packs on jumped off they started to drown. They kept yelling and yelling. But I said, oh, I'm not to the, to the end of this hall. They yelled for help. But no one in the, 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 our crowd wanted to do anything. And I, and I often despise myself for not doing He's doing it because, you know, I don't think they're, they're dead is singles. They have families. And they're going to get the message, you know, that they're, that they're, they're not coming home, you know. I took the honor flight to Washington to, to see the World War II Memorial. And that was a, that was a great one. And the lady who was my guardian there, we became good friends because she is a captain in the National Guard stationed in Washington. So we corresponded quite a bit. In fact, I had a gift from her last Christmas. Scared to death. You know, I come down over the side of the boat and got in the landing craft. Well, you realize then what was going on. Yeah, it was scary. I was scared, I no doubt about it. Uh, they told us to keep our heads down. Don't look up because you, you get it. But after we hit the beach, you said, now flare out, go in different directions. This fellow with me, and I just took off together, you know. It did a chase history right there. 
I, I remember looking up at the sky as we were going in. And I said, Lord, is this to be my last day on earth? Well, it's hard. You, you do the best you can to get it off your mind, but sometimes it's hard to do. Sometimes you can't. I don't feel too good about it because we paid an awful price for it. You know, freedom's not free. Someone has to pay for it, and we, uh, we did. Oh, it's hard to believe it's been that long. Because it's been a long time, but 75 years. Saw a lot of carnage, a lot of blood. Uh, 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 you know, it was uh, horrific, you know. I, Every time I think about it, I get tears in my eyes. Because it, it seems as though it was just last month that it happened. It started early that morning, but it was up in the afternoon. There were several ways ahead of me. I wasn't really the first one. The 45th Division was ahead of me. He said, now, why don't you go out and search the beach, see if there's any, anyone left. No, nobody really said much. I think everybody was practically in the same boat. The sanctity of living life didn't mean anything to them, but it meant a lot to me because I lost too many friends. Freedom of liberty, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, which no other country's got. And we have it today because of men that gave their life. And I'm thankful that God spared me, but many of them went down. I heard a figure of about 30,000 lost their lives that day. So we all should be thankful that we have the peace that we have. So, for what it's worth, there it is. Is there anything else that you want to say? Mm -hmm. Anything else that you want to... What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for your service. Yes, me too. And thank you for letting me capture it on I want to thank you for thanking me. <laughs> <laughs>